So we're going to go over the controllers. So we have an indoor line of products called the Infinity Series. And the, ben the benefits of the Infinity Series is uh, management of all your access points, your hotspots. And the Infinity Series, all but one of them are, is an indoor product. And we have several options available. We have two dual bands and then a couple of uh, single bed 2.4 gigahertz and then one outdoor dual band product. The benefit of this firmware and this Infinity Hotspot software is they can also be installed on our outdoor DLB series and our DLB Pro series. And these are just kind of a basic overview of what they look like. So you've got the standard old style with the antennas and then you've got two of the single band, um, one of them an AF series and then the other two dual band in the outdoor. And you can see also the power consumption at the bottom and the type of power. So the first two only have passive 24 volt power, which is the same as the DLB in the series. But the rest of them support AF power, which would mean you, you could plug them into an, a switch. So we had three different types of controller options when you set up a device. The first one standalone. And if you do not want to use a controller and just use the standard access point, this is one you choose. Then we have an integrated controller, which works off of a master access point. And then we have the external controller, which is either server-based or cloud-based. So some of the benefits are the plug and play. So once you configure your master one device, all additional devices out of the box will auto configure. And then you must have, in terms, to, in terms of your networking to make this work, everything has to be running off a DHCP server and on the same layer two network. And these are the differences between the internal and external controllers. The in integrated has to be used on the same local network and it's controlled by one master access point. And you have basic settings you can set to control the other manage access points. But again, all this is locally controlled. You can't get to it remotely without setting up some you know, redirects and forwards. The external controller is either a server-based, which we provide the software for free for, or a cloud-based. It is a globally controlled, and you have a lot more functions and options to add in. And the external controller um, is set up like a virtual access point so that all the other access points are managed access points. And with the integrated controller, you're maxed out to 50 access points per local network. So you'd have to set up more than one master access point if you wanted to continue adding additional access points. But with the external controller, you're unlimited by your hardware. So you could do unlimited number and keep building and building and building and creating additional networks. So if you're going to build your own server, here are the minimum requirements. You have to have 2.4 gigahertz processor with 10 gigs of RAM. And of course, with the Linux options there. And the server downloads, again, are available on our website under the controller section. So you can create either a virtual Windows or a Linux version of that if you want to build your own. The simplest, however, is just to go ahead and create a cloud account, which will be your external server where you can create multiple networks and globally access everything. So to create that account, you go to controller.legalwave.com and just sign up. Just have a couple of information you have to add, email, full name, your company name, and then create a password. Once you do this, you're going to be assigned an organizational ID. And this is how your devices will come back and register to your account. So you want to make note of that organizational ID. And then you want to create your first network. So when you have when you first start, you just have your organization. So from here you can add as many local networks as you want and just keep adding networks. But you have to start with at least one. So you create your first network and you assign it to your organization. 
Now, at some point, there will be a paid version of this where you'll actually be able to add multiple organizations. There will be a lot more to it. But right now, this is the free version. Everything is unlimited. Um, and you just keep adding and organizing as you want. So once you create your first network, you've got that listed under your organization. And obviously, you're not going to have any clients or any devices added. So at this point, you're ready to configure your first max master access point. And this is the case in every network you create. You have to configure one device. So the options are three, master integrated, cloud AP external, or standalone access point. So in this case, we're creating a cloud. So we choose that and then hit next. And you would enter your organizational ID and then the URL, controller.legalwave.com. Now, if this is a server, you would do the same thing, or if this is external hardware, you'd also redirect using the controller URL. Then, once you've entered this information, hit save. Go back into your controller. At the upper right-hand corner, you're going to get an exclamation point letting you know that you have new devices to add. So you click on that, and it shows you the device the MAC address, and ask you exactly where you want to save those devices to. So if you have multiple networks and you're just adding one, you can go through and assign to any one of those networks available. Once you click Register, you now have one device registered to your organization network. And from here, you can just plug in everything out of the box and they will auto-configure themselves this organization that you create is basically a virtual access point that contains all the settings that you want to pass down to all of your access points. So from here, you control your wireless SS ID, whether you want to turn on, if it's a dual band, both bands, where what you set up for as far as your password and your security. You can set up bandwidth limitations. You can set up firmware updates. Everything is controlled from this one virtual access point. So once we get one registered, you can see it shows up as one device online. So it kind of is a secondary. also shows you if your devices are currently online or offline in their status, as well as how many other clients are connected. And it shows all of your networks. So that's how the controller basically works. And some of the benefits of, obviously, is, is being able to control everything from one global location and, obviously, the ability to add on to features later. Some of those features that we've added on would be like VLANs associated with the additional Ethernet ports, the ability to turn off the access point during certain hours, uh, auto firmware update, um, a couple different things like that. But as far as um, some of the settings in there, if you're not one to want to sit there and keep registering each device individually, you can turn on the option to automatically add a device or register a device to a certain network. So those are the basics of how the controller works, but there are a lot of other advanced functions. Does anyone have any questions? Any questions about anything that we're adding or anything about how it works once it's registered or registering? Mark, did you want to add anything? I think I'm good unless Dan does or Daryl. Yeah, this looks fantastic. It's, it's a lot of fun to play with once you start adding the devices. Now we have some customers who are doing some massive installs in like uh, condominiums. And some of the new features that we add are coming from their suggestions based on what their customers are needing. So some of it can be using some of the auto sensors for controlling your air conditioning or different things in the, in the building. 
So we've added, you know, some functionality to allow that to be easier to integrate. Well, and then I, I, if I'm seeing this correctly, um, my presumption is you can either have it as one global or multiple single, but but certainly the overall management remotely is um, is is very you know I don't want to say very simple, but very available and very flexible. Oh yeah, absolutely. So once you've registered them, you can individually. Some of the settings are individual that you can put toward the access points. Um, you can name them. You can assign like geographical locations to them. You can go in and play with your channel spacing and channels. You can do a lot of things that are individual but yet controlled through the global container. Okay, so I was just a couple minutes in, in arriving. Um, is there an auto, uh, uh, almost like an auto load balancing um, feature to it where uh, it, as, as the bandwidth starts to, to lag a little bit, um, and, and a next nearby access point will, will pick up the bandwidth load? It's not in terms, it's not like a mesh network, but we are releasing something called semi-mesh. So the way that mesh works is that it kind of talks to all the nodes throughout the whole link, all the access points. And if one drops off, it creates another path to a different one. The way the semi-mesh works is that it goes back to your master access point and asks, you know, who do I need to go to? It's not as seamless as mesh, but pretty close. It's just a different type of mesh. So, and of course, because you've got all your access points responding to the same location, they are changing channels and adjusting themselves according to the network and the needs that they need to auto-channel. Also, the simplicity of being able to pull something out of the box and just plug it in and let it auto-configure, and if something fails, and you can just pull one out of the box, plug it in, and it'll auto-configure. Yeah, right. That, that seems to be a very nice feature for sure. And like I said, the, the benefit of using your own server or the cloud account is that you can manage it glo globally, but if you are in an organization where you're physically on site, it's just as easy to use to, the internal controller but you have one master access point controlling all the others instead of the virtual access point. Any other questions or comments? Hey Leslie, Hi. this is Dan Leck. I do have a couple of questions for you. Uh, one I was, I was kind of curious is as to can you talk about how the channels are assigned automatically if you have multiple um, APs that you're, you know, putting into a specific location? Let's say you're doing a small school or a, a small hotel that's a privately owned little hotel. Right. And you have uh, 10 APs in there. How does, how does the, the management platform work with the APs to assign channels for them? It's very similar to how it would work with just a just a point to point between our equipment. So the functionality was already there using our proprietary software. So it just expands that to the local network and, and assigns access points, um, different channels based on like an auto channel. All the channels are listed and it takes care of, of changing channels and adjusting just through the software on the back end. And would you say that's, is, is that a pretty um, oh, transparent feature? I mean, uh, for example, it doesn't, we, some of the early auto channel select um, functionality that I had been familiar with seemed like it would be potentially disruptive mm -hmm. in a large network because it would seem like, you know, that it would almost be like there would be a storm like a, like one AP would change its channel and then subsequent APs would start changing their channel and it, and it would just kind of keep cascading and, and so forth. Is this a, I don't know, other, another way to 
say it other than is this a pretty stable and transparent feature? Yes, it is. Yeah. So once everything's installed and it gets it like like tweaks all the channels and everything, they're stable until obviously something comes in, like another accident or something. But then it doesn't affect the whole thing like like you said, a domino. It doesn't do that. And the only time you'd be concerned is if you were in an area just flooded with 2.4. And then, you know, you can't add, you can only add so much to the frequency before you will you know, have interference. Sure. One of the other questions that I saw posted in the chat window, I don't know if you can see that, Leslie, but um, it asks, how can you, see, or if you could speak about the, the, the handoff between access points? Oh, the handoff. So hand 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 yeah. Um, so as you go to each one, it, there is like a couple of seconds, if you were, say, on a, a phone using a VoIP phone and moving from one location to the other, there is a couple of seconds as it changes access points, but it's not going to be a complete drop, and you wouldn't even notice the difference. It's not something where you, as you're changing channels, all of a sudden you have no connectivity. They all share the same SSID, and it works together as one network. And that's where the semi-mesh comes in. As we add new features like that, it becomes smoother and smoother. But we're still relying on the client, correct? Relying on the client? This, you mean the server or? The client as in whatever piece of equipment somebody may be using. I mean, like, like my cell phone or my tablet, it does not have the smartest, you know, Wi-Fi ability, so it'll try to hold on to the last access point as long as possible before switching over to the next one. Yes. Yeah, that's that's true. But as if they're all on the same SSID and it changes channel based on the strongest signal, then the handoff is pretty smooth. And as long as you don't have like a really old piece of equipment that has a hard time, you know, with wireless, like old drivers and old, you know, wireless equipment. Another benefit of it, too, is that it's not just stuck with uh, the internal equipment. If you want to do an outdoor networking with hotspots, you can install it on the DLB series and DLB Pro series as well. So if you're doing like an outdoor park or an outdoor theater or some sort of uh, function where maybe you need security cameras, all this is available to do outdoors as well. Any other questions? Mark, are you guys good? Dan, you guys set? I think so. I think I'm set. Okay. Can you change the power output yes. of each access point individually? Yes, you Perfect. can. Yes, you can. Yes, that's one of the features you can do individually to each, each access point. If you wanted to custom and, and manually adjust channels, you can also do that as well individually through each access point. Well, if we don't have any other questions, we can go ahead and wrap it up. And if you guys think of anything else, you can certainly email support at LegalWave.com.